Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and it's time for a fun little Moon Lambo video here. Let's talk about this. It's the idea of like, how much money would it take to be a top 1% holder of Bitcoin versus how much money would it take investing to be a top 1% holder of XRP? And the reason that this entered my little Moon Lambo brain here is thanks to this article from Decrypt titled, How Much Bitcoin Does It Take to Break Into the 1% Club? So I thought we'd do a fun little comparison for this video. And I will tell you that as I'm recording this in October of 2020, generally, like, relatively speaking, that's the word, relatively speaking, it doesn't take that much money to get into the 1% of XRP, to be part of that exclusive club, but I don't suppose it's going to stay like that forever. Now, I also want to be clear that I am not a financial advisor. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice or advice of any kind, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. Um, I'm just, I just think it's fun to talk about these topics uh, with my fellow XRP community members, which is why I, I make these videos and uh, just put it out on the YouTube. It's, it's my most favorite hobby I've ever had, but I just want to be clear, that is all that it is. Before we go any further, if you would please delicately tap the like button, I would appreciate it. And if you're a fan of being in the 1% of XRP holders. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel because I assure you of this, you will be in good company. Let's jump in. Since its creation just over a decade ago, Bitcoin's price has risen far and fast, becoming one of the best performing assets in recent years. Um, actually, um, <laughs> I'll tell you, if you look over the last decade, it's the best. Now, in recent years, there have been other altcoins that have outpaced it, but holy hell. Uh, we just, we've never seen anything like this like, ever. <laughs> it's, it's freaking crazy. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's naturally led to curiosity among owners of the cryptocurrency. How much Bitcoin do you need to have stashed away to be considered a substantial holder? One yardstick by which this can be measured is the 1% club. That is... Someone in the top 1% of Bitcoin holders worldwide. Of course, pending down exactly what that means can be a challenge. Figures cited range from as low as 0.28 Bitcoin to 15 Bitcoin. And wait, uh, the, by the way, the 0.28 Bitcoin is ridiculous. I'm going to illustrate exactly why. <clears throat> um, Sometimes humans' brains misfire, and the, the guy that came up with this, I guess his brain misfired. Nothing against him personally. We all make mistakes. Sometimes I think through something, and then in hindsight, I'm like, yo, obviously that isn't correct. So not a dig at the guy whatsoever, but yeah, something the brain had to have misfired. Unfortunately, uh, Decrypt here did not pick up on this particular mistake, so I will go ahead and fix the problem, because that's what Moon Lambo does. I clean up messes that other people make. In February 2002, Jake Levison, an analyst for Blockworks, uh, yeah, Blockworks Group, tweeted that. Um, they didn't mean 2002, they meant 2020. Um, if you own 0.28 Bitcoin, you're statistically guaranteed to be in the richest 1% of the world in Bitcoin terms. And you can see there's a tweet on the screen. <clears throat> Levinson's reasoning is that if you own 0.28 Bitcoin, only 1% of the world will ever be able to own more than you. The rationale behind the figure, as former Google product director Steve Lee tweeted in 2018, is that if you divide Bitcoin's 21 million hard cap by 1% of the, uh, the, the then current world population of 7.5 billion, you get 0.28. That is not what that tells See, that's the problem. So they're taking 21 million, the max supply of Bitcoin, dividing it by the world population. No, that is not what it gives you. It does not tell you if you're a one percenter. Do it with XRP. I've done this calculation for XRP. I've talked about it multiple times in previous videos. It's been a while since I mentioned it. But if you take the hard cap of XRP, the total cap, if you want to call it that, of XRP of 100 billion, and then you divide it by the world population, which I know is, it's they use the number 7.5 billion. Let's just use that. You get something like 13.3. 13.3 XRP. That doesn't tell you that it takes that much to be a 1% XRP holder. That means that if you evenly distributed XRP across all humans on the planet, each each human, if again, if allotted the exact same amount of XRP, would only be able to have 13.3. That's all that means. 
That's it. It has nothing to do with the 1% club. This could not be more obvious. And so I guess his brain misfired, nothing against the guy whatsoever. I, like, I, I make stupid calculations myself. I promise I'm not being hard on him. But um, it's too bad that Decrypt, having had time to like type this up with their, their little fingers here, didn't pause and think, wait, how does that actually make sense? Anyway, and the piece continues. Of course, that doesn't take into account the fact that not all 21 million Bitcoin have been mined yet, or the fact that there are millions of lost Bitcoin that skew the figure, or the fact that Bitcoin isn't evenly distributed among addresses. And those are fair points. It's true. Um, all that's true for the for XRP as well, with the exception of the mining portion, because XRP isn't mined. It was all created at inception. But you should take that into account when you're thinking what, what might the implications be in terms of what does it really take to be part of the 1%. But I think the best way to, to approach it, in my humble opinion, is do what we'd say Wynn's website is, ledger.exposed, and just take a look at what would it take. Because look, the, the ledger's public. For, for XRP, which is a blockchain. The XRP blockchain, it's public record, same for Bitcoin. So you can compile the data given that the information is publicly available and say, okay, to be, like, how much Bitcoin would you have to have to be in the top 1% of accounts? You know, cause that's a pretty damn good indication. And still, yes, you have all these other problems of, okay, but how much was lost, which uh, maybe, you know, it would be nice if we could magically know that not included in the calculation. Um, you know, things like, I, I totally get it. And then how many people have multiple addresses, which means, okay, they've got more than you might think. I, I totally get all of that. But that would be a better starting point, in my humble opinion. And then we could just acknowledge, okay, as this is the case, probably with pretty much any crypto, some's going to be lost, right? Some people are going to have multiple addresses. Just acknowledge that. So it's, it's never going to be perfect. But to use that as the metric makes a lot more sense to me, just my humble opinion here. But they go a little bit further here. And this one gets a little bit closer to reality. And they're right, that's just one calculation, though. Another rival theory suggests that you'd need a much larger investment of 15 Bitcoin to join the 1% club. At today's prices, that's over $100,000. So Bitcoin's at, uh, what the hell is it at right now? 11,500-ish. 11, $11, Let's just call it that. That's, that's close enough right now. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I tend to think you'd probably need a little bit more than that. I mean, you know, if you're talking about 15 Bitcoin, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's over $150,000. So, uh, that's a lot more, but even if we're going with that, I think it would be more, I, I suspect I'd, I'd be willing to bet, but e let's just go with that number. Let's just go with that number. So $150,000, and I'm even, I'm going to round down. Let's just say it's $150,000 to be in the top 1% of Bitcoin holders. How much would it take to be in the top 1% of XRP holders. Welcome to Ledger.Exposed, my friends here. And this was put together by Vite Wind, who is um, creator of the XRP Tipbot. He's the, uh, the, the, the founder of XRPL Labs, which is founded through uh, Ripple Spring Initiative, which is now known as Ripple X. And you can see how much XRP you'd have to be hold, uh, you'd have to hold to be in a certain percentile. So in, in order to be in the top 1% of XRP holders, you need 84,752 XRP. And what would that cost you at today's prices? Uh, I'm not going to do perfect math on this for this, the sake of this video. I don't think it's, it's necessary. I'm just going to round this because I'm just trying to get the concept across here, trying to get the idea across. And it would be a little over $20,000. So let's just assume that their numbers of, uh, of, of you know, 15 Bitcoin, which today over $150,000 to be in the top 1%, and I'm not convinced that's correct. It's probably a good bit more. Uh, but even if so, $150,000, it's got to be way off, but still, uh, versus a little over 20000 to be in the top 1% of, uh, of XRP holders. Now think about that, because I know that a ton of you listening, and this is never, this, I swear this is not a dig against you if, if you're one of these people at all, I, I know that a ton of you listening have car payments that cost more than what it would, it would cost to be in the top 1% of XRP holders. And so you just think, okay, so you've got this car note. A lot of it, well, some of you would have paid it. I mean, some of you paid cash, but so, uh, many of you have a car note for a car worth 20, 30, 40,000, 50, however many thousands of dollars. And this damn thing, it, it's a hunk of metal with an engine in it that's depreciating like crazy. And so you've got that, and you have your standard of living in a car that's not a complete rust bucket. Got it. Another option, and I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying for the fun of this video, you could just not have that car and drive a $3,000 car 
and put it all in the XRP. Now, again, I'm, this is not financial. This is, I'm just, it's a for fun video, but I'm just saying you could just not have that expense and put all of that extra into a tax XRP. And what do you think is going to be a better investment? Your car, whatever it costs to be getting, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, maybe more, what do you think that's going to be worth in five years? What do you think XRP is going to be worth in five years? Well, you're already willing to invest that much money into a car that you know is depreciating like crazy. It's going to lose like half of its value in a, in a matter of years, right? And then you've got XRP, which, my gosh, if history is any indication of the direction this thing might go, could be worth substantially more than it is today. And I don't make price predictions, so I, I'm, I'm willing to have fun discussions about the potential of XRP price going farther. I just... It would be disingenuous if I made predictions because I'm not an analyst, uh, that type of analyst. I love researching fundamentals around Ripple and XRP, but it, it's, that's, that's not my stick. Go, go find a chart analyst if you want a prediction. But um, I firmly believe it will be worth substantially more in the future than it is today. So some of you, my friends, and you, you are my friends, we're in the same community. Or, well, we got each other's backs here. You're driving a freaking car that's worth more than you're willing to invest in XRP. Just saying. <laughs> But, you know, if that's where um, your risk tolerance lies, then that's fine. But uh, to me, it's, it's a certainty that these cars are going to be worth substantially less, right? These are not good investments, right? This is, uh, so I'm, I'm just saying here, but, but it's cool to think, too, that in terms of the multiplier effect, because uh, market cap of XRP, let's just round out. I know it's more than this, but let's just say today it's, it's $10 billion. Well, my gosh, that means that Bitcoin's market cap is like 20 times higher. And so like, nowhere near as much money has to come into XRP for it to be worth substantially more in the future. Right? Uh, my gosh. And look at this. I mean, and to get in the top 0.5% of, uh, the, of XRP holders, you, need, you only need 154,388 XRP. Now, I'm not pretending that it's not a lot of money to get there, which is subjective anyway. So even if that were like forty to forty-five thousand dollars, depending on what the price of XRP may be at the moment, even if you can be in the top 0.5 percent, and I know my friends out there listening, many of you have cars that are more than this and substantially less XRP than this. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just making what has to be a true observation because I know, certainly in America at least, because I'm in the, I'm in America, I'm in the Midwest here. Oh my God, the, the norm is to have car payments. And I know that a ton of people are just out there buying brand new cars or almost new cars that have barely depreciated. And they're worth tens of thousands of dollars at that point in time. And so I'm, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, I'm not, I promise I'm not being harsh on you. I'm just making a forefront observation here. But my gosh, for a little over $40,000, you could be in the top 0.5%. I mean, do you realize if when you get up into that range, because if you had 200,000 XRP, you realize that at $5, if XRP hits $5, then your XRP holdings are worth $1 million. Do you guys, have you thought through this here? For a little more than the price of whatever car you may be having today, making making payments on, you could have so much XRP that if it barely gets above its previous all-time high of $3.84, if it barely gets up to that, just hits $5, you'd have a million dollars, right? And I'm not pretending like it's not a lot of money to put into a highly risky asset. So I'm not making that's why I keep saying it's a for fun video. But it's an interesting observation, is it not? Because uh, putting that much money into a like, uh, you know, I think I've said it. I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna start to go in circles if I keep talking here. I don't want to do that. But um, but it is a fun comparison, really. So just to get back at the core of what I was saying before wrapping up here, it's just the idea of to be an XRP one percenter a little over $20,000 to be a Bitcoin one percenter, according to them anyway, over $150,000. And which is going to have a greater multiplier effect? Like even if you plop down 150 or in the 1%, the, think about how much more money has to pl fly in to, to have two, three, four, five, you know, 10x gains. So to me, uh, in terms of comparison, there is no comparison. I'm happy with what I've done. I'm just saying in terms of investing here. <laughs> but you can tell me what you think below. I just think it's an interesting way to look at all of this. But uh, I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.